Is this just going to be the best conversation I've had in months, or is there still a chance you can get me elected president? That's what I'd like to know. <laughs> Jack, he's still asking me for program. I'm trying to make you embrace a vision. But you just want to know what the packaging is. I'm a practical man. I'm from Missouri. I thought you were from the East Coast. That's an expression. It means show me. Devising policies, that's your job. I do think that as long as you continue looking at things through that old patriarchal Cartesian Atonian lens, you're gonna miss out on what the world really is. You, we, all of us, we we need a new vision of the world and we need a more comprehensive, more inclusive science to support us. There is a new theory emerging now, which places all the ecological concepts we've been talking about into one coherent scientific framework. We call it systems theory. The theory of living systems. Living systems? Mm -hmm. All living organisms, as well as social systems and ecosystems. See, this theory would help us get a much firmer grasp on the sciences that deal with life. Are these all your own ideas, or do other people share them? I, I mean, has this been applied in the sciences anywhere? Am I a crank? <laughs> it's okay, Senator. This is real science. And many scientists, including some Nobel laureates, have been working on these ideas. Prigozhin. Bateson, Maturana, just to mention a few. Yes, it is science, but of a new kind. Instead of concentrating on basic building blocks, the system's view concentrates on principles of organization. Instead of cutting things to pieces, it looks at the living system as a whole. How can you think usefully about things in this holistic way? That's what I don't see. You can contemplate them, you can look at them, as Thomas says. But if you want to do something, if you want to get into specifics, by definition, don't you have to take things apart? How can you talk usefully about a tree without talking about its roots or its leaves or its bark? Oh, I could. Without even naming the parts you mentioned. Well, a Cartesian would look at a tree and conceptually take it to pieces. But then he would never really understand the nature of the tree. A systems thinker would look at a tree and see the seasonal exchange between tree and earth, earth and sky. Would see the annual cycle, which really is one big breath the earth takes through its forests, providing us with oxygen. A breath of life, linking the earth with the sky and us with the universe. A systems thinker would look at the tree and see the life of the tree only in relation to the life of the whole forest. Would see the tree as a habitat for birds, a home for insects. But if you look at a tree and and try to understand it as something separate, you will be bewildered by the millions of fruits it's producing in its lifetime. Because only one or two trees will grow from those fruits. So if you look at the tree and see it as a member of a larger living system, that abundance of fruits will make sense. Because hundreds upon hundreds of Forest animals and birds will survive because of them. Interdependence. And the tree cannot survive on its own either. To draw water from the ground, it needs the fungus that grows at the tip of each root. And the fungus needs the root to survive, and the root needs the fungus. If one dies, the other dies. And there are millions of relationships like this in our world, each depending on each other for life. 
The system's theory recognizes this web of relationships as the essence of all living things. Only the uninformed would call such a notion naive or romantic. Because this dependency we all share is a scientific fact. A web of relationships? Yes, but this time it is the web of life itself. The theory of living systems actually provides you with an outline of an answer to that eternal question, what is life? Okay, Sonia, let's hear it. What's life? Well, in system language, the answer would be the essence of life is self-organization. <laughs> but so far,